Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea. Today we have the North American Dreamhack Masters Winter winner. Beating out Neep in the finals. Here in the bottom right it's going to be Scarlet. And in the bottom left we have the GSL Season 3 winner in Kier. Now, both of these players are winners of their respective regions. The only thing we need to figure out is who the best is between the two of them. Secure starts with a barracks far into his main base. Perhaps trying to fake a proxy rex or something of a sort. Or maybe just to get a slightly faster reaper actually. I'm not even sure if this position is closer to this jump than this is. Yeah, it's probably going to be slightly closer but not by that much. Maybe save uh, one and a half second. Scarlet's going to scout this and say hey what's kicking off here? And immediately she will also find this barrack. So that was the world's shortest mind game in the world. This SCV is going to start moving across the map and look for a little bit of information. The main piece of info that Cure will be looking for is the timing on that hatchery. Is that hatchery at your regular uh, 158, 159 finish? Or was it a lot later? It's going to be at that 158 finish, which means this was a hatchery first. Cure is going to go back home. We'll see what his response is going to be in his follow-up. Factory coming out after that Reaper. So a standard opener here out of Cure. At the same time we have Scarlet just uh, popping out a couple of Queens. Lynx are on the map as well. And Scarlet right now kind of committing to that main base defense as the Reaper shows up. These Lynx will need to take care of that. And most importantly of course you don't want to lose any Lynx. Oh, you don't really, uh, as long as you don't lose links, you're usually fine. Uh, one link is fine, especially over if you open up with four. If you open up with something like six links, you don't really want to lose any links. But as that wasn't the case, losing one link generally is fine. First creep tumor goes up for free as well, as the Reaper did jump up into the main base. I think Scarlet's going to be uh, very happy with this early game. Nothing going wrong so far. The second gas hasn't been taken yet here for Cure. You can see the third CC already being thrown down. It's one of the more heavy eco-focused builds. Starport before refinery as well. And oh. I'm sorry, I was going to say I'm surprised we see a marine here. Because usually we first see the Hellions being built. Yep, there we go. Hellions before marine. And this kind of feels like a Viking opener here for me. So marine into tech lab. And then a Viking on that starport. Maybe even Viking lip is possible. There's a couple of variations of course that Terran can play from this triple CC. You could have also seen Banshee, but in that case, you see a tech lab being researched immediately on that barracks. Viking is going to be the starport unit of choice here for the GSL winner. Now we see Scarlet uh, finishing up her metabolic boost. Just taking it slow, getting some extra gas. Could be seeing a quick layer attack. Could also be going into those double Evo chambers before the layer. There's a couple of options that she does have available to herself. And we'll see what she goes for exactly. The first Viking is going to hit the field. And it seems like four Hellions. No, six Hellions is going to be it. That Viking is going to scout out this Overlord. They most likely be capable of doing a little bit of damage to it. And probably actually just straight up killing it. The rest of the Overlords will need to kind of return home. Or at least closer to creep. So the Queens can come and defend them. Exactly what's happening here. Scarlet playing it well so far. Cures opener. Uh, hasn't really been able to do much of anything two links and a single overlord going down four minutes and 40 seconds into the game that is just a great opener here for the zerg player it's also steadily spreading creep slowly but surely the creep tumors are being pushed forward a couple more go down here the viking heading towards the main it's like okay there's no overlords here interesting i'm just gonna kind of scout around the edge of the creep that's usually where these overlords are to see the hellion movement so not only does this Viking get a kill, it also forces the Overlords to move back. You can see the vision of Scarlet has been greatly diminished. There's still an Overlord here on the top side. Um, but if our good friend Cure has something to say about that, that Overlord won't last too long either. Follow up for Scarlet is going to be a Baneling Nest. Five blind Banelings, perhaps believing that there might be a, uh, a weird follow up coming in here. Not the case, of course. And we see a layer coming out of her as well. So gonna lose this overlord you see the liberator in the main base not doing much of anything so far well, the sport's gonna get stuck behind this queen kind of a painful move here 
Queen's gonna tank two shots. Uh, good drone micro though, barely losing any drones. Queen does end up falling and getting absolutely burned there. One more drone goes down, but really so far, this opener out of Scarlet has been pretty darn good. She hasn't taken any major damage. Of course, she isn't really supposed to take any major damage because she's playing against a triple CC opener rather than a double CC with a way faster Hellion push and with a, with a faster starport unit. So it makes a lot of sense, but still it's nice to see. Because very often you also see these Korean Terrans just kind of go ham with these first 8 to 10 units. These, these Hellions, these starport units, and they get way too much done. And the game kind of ends the moment the first two medifacts hit the field. And that's not going to be the case here. You see Scarlet still trying to spread her creep. Still pushing away these Hellions. Cure at this point has done a little bit more to the creep. Take a look at that. We see 17 creep tumors have gone down already this game. It's a lot of creep tumors. These two medivacs are going to load up and head towards the main base, perhaps. We'll see if Scarlet's going to be ready for that. Ten more links are on the way. Twelve links are out already. Seventy-three drones are on the map as well. And with the gold being taken, the spire being built. Kind of like in this position here for Scarlet. High drone count. Uh, not a whole lot of units. And the fact that these units are not in position might actually be a bit painful here. The Banelings are going to try to connect with these Marines. This fight is going to be mainly on creep. Centrifugal hooks won't be done yet. And there's a little bit of a dance going on here. Let's see if Cure War is dancing shoes to prom today. Seems like the answer is uh, yes. She is gonna leave after not taking out a single Bane. A couple of links go down. Hellions move in at the same time towards the gold. Gold will need to be evacuated. The Queens are starting to walk back. And they'll save these drones in time. Of course, you still have these Hellions that can shoot from the back as well. It's not like uh, this gold mineral is one of the safer mineral lines. Actually, it's one of the more dangerous mineral lines. 73 workers here for Scarlet. 72 for Cure, who doesn't seem to be keen on killing his opponent. It seems a lot more keen on just getting into a longer game and surviving. Four more overlords on the way here for Scarlet, who's getting close to being supply blocked. Another hatchery gets thrown down, this time inside of the main base for a bit of a macro hatch. The first 12 Mutalisks are out as well. That is going to allow Scarlet to put on a little bit of pressure on the opponent. Oh god. This could be either the greatest or the worst timing with these medevacs. And it's going to be the, the greatest timing. Boosted into the main base to be safe against these Mutalisks. And although these Mutas came in unspotted, they now uh, are going to be less capable of doing damage. Still will be able to fly into his third base, get a couple of SCVs here and there, maybe even uh, scoot over back into that natural. It's not going to be the case. Just going to keep flying towards that top side, maybe come back, start uh, hitting these depots or something like that. Creep spread continues. There are still eight queens on the maps. Gold base uh, still fully mining as well. And we see Scarlet uh, only on six gas so far. Now gas seven and eight are being taken. Means that that Muta count could have been a little higher if those gases had been earlier. She's gonna go up to 10 gas here, okay. This feels like a heavy dedication into this Ling Bane Muta style. We're gonna see a lot of Bane Links roll into planetaries, into SCVs, and just into armies as well. These Mutas are gonna get caught, one Muta falls. Painful little move there. Always painful when you lose your Mutas, and also when your rotation gets scouted, because now it means that these Mutas need to fly around even longer them to get anything done 46 links are on the way four more workers scarlet going up all the way to 97 the infestation pit also gets thrown down and i'm looking at cure i'm looking at his army comp and i'm looking at the timing that he could potentially be hitting with 2-2 two -two here and a maxed army am i really afraid for scarlet here 36 banelings are out on the map so that is a pretty decent baneling count i would say a big engagement being set up here. Not quite a brilliant flank, but mines are not in position. Feels like this is a very small part of Cure's army as well. Yeah, there's still a lot in that main base. There was a bunch of units in the third as well. To Cure seemingly lost his entire army, but he still has 160 supply left. That just means that he wasn't really fighting with his entire army. That wasn't a brilliant fight, honestly. This is going to allow Scarlet to to get something done, immediately starts up six more Mutalis. It's gonna go into Carapace upgrades right now as well for these Mutas, rather than the plus two attack. I've seen this more recently. Saw Rogue do this the other day as well. So it's interesting to see 
A lot of these Zerg's just opting for the carrot phase. Well, in my mind, the, the attack upgrade was by far most common. Perhaps I've been ill-informed. 50c on the way here for Cure as well, but taking that 50 is going to be very tricky. This base is always hard to hold, especially if there's a large mutilist number. 18 more banelings are on the way, 40 already on the map. Creep is being taken out, and Scarlet probably wants to be putting a stop to that anytime soon. Here comes uh, well, a minor baneling force moving forward. Trying to take out a couple of these marines. Uh, two of these mines do uh, get detonated on top of only single banes. Here comes the next big hit. A lot of the banes underneath the Muta's actually falling. And this was a bad engagement for Scarlet. She still does have a very large army here for a potential run by. But if she's not capable of taking out this army in the middle of the map, this run by can't really be sent in either. However, this run by now might start becoming a flank. And not just any type of flank. This is a really powerful flank. She's going to be capable of completely surrounding Cure here from multiple sides. Completely on creep. I think Cure's in a little bit of trouble. Scarlet's going to collapse on top of this army. Cure doesn't really know where to micro. He's all stuck on creep. He's going to get absolutely blasted in this fight. The Mutas will stay alive as well. We'll be capable of chasing away a lot of these medevacs. And the medevac count will go down the drain. Five medevacs remain. Two more will fall. I think there's one medevac over... Well, two medevacs over here that could still go down as well. So the moment you take out this many medevacs, often the medevac is going to be kind of the limiting factor... The, the limiting unit for the Terran to move out because if a Terran has a 200-200 supply army but only four medevacs, a single stim and that army can't fight ever again. So it becomes really tricky for the Terran to even do something as simple as clearing creep, like stimming forward 15 marines. You're just going to occupy all your medevacs for the next 10-12 seconds or so, just healing those marines back up. Well, ideally with a higher medevac count, that isn't the case. Only three medevacs right now out on the map. This planetary is being taken. You can explode banelings through the minerals. But often it isn't a, a very cost efficient play as you can't hit that many. Oh, here we actually see her go. Uh, yeah, it's, gonna <laughs> it's gonna get two SCVs. Uh, it's a cute move but it doesn't really do that much. Two SCVs for two banelings obviously not a good trade. Sensor tower here is helping out Cure an awful lot though. You have a couple of banelings being morphed here in the top. I think I saw an Ultra Cavern being thrown down, and the first three Ultras are already out as well. Skyton is plating on the way, yep it is. Adrenal Glance has finished up, and plus two for those uh, Flyer attacks is being researched as well. Large army here of Scarlet is uh, going to get chased away by a part of Cure's army. Actually a part, it's a relatively big part of Cure's army. And there's not enough here on the bottom side I believe. So right now, Scarlet and Cure are going to trade a base for a base. The only problem is, is that this base for Scarlet wasn't really mining. Also, Scarlet just has way more bases. And if you're on 6 base already and you lose your 7th, that's way less impactful than losing your 5th if you're on 4. Especially considering that Cure is just kind of lacking mineral patches at this point. I mean, these are starting to mine out, at least half of them. So we're really just working with a gold and two half bases at this point. This was not a fight that Scarlet could take. She's gonna lose a lot of these Ultras. Miscontrol there. Uh, all three Ultras go down. Terrible control there. Also losing a large army over here. Ten Ultras on the way. Let's take a look at the, the resources lost after that. 19k down the drain against only 15k out of Cure. There is going to be 10 Ultralisk and Cure is looking to push forward. And now all of a sudden this is a lot scarier. There's not a whole lot of mines, but the bailing count also isn't that large. Is there enough Marauders here to deal with these Ultras? 25 Marauders total. I think there might just be Scarlet in a little bit of trouble here. Needs to take a very good fight. And this is not a very good fight. Scarlet getting pushed back. We'll most likely start losing this base. We see another good pre-split out of Cure here. Marauders in the front, Marines in the back. That count is too little though. So a lot of these units already in the orange. Ultras do manage to connect with a lot of these Marauders. And this was a really good fight for Scarlet. All these Ultras getting maximum efficiency there. Insanely good surface area. And these units all being low because the complete lack of Metafax definitely wasn't helping Cure there. A couple of mines do end up burrowing here in the back. As Scarlet is going to keep pushing on. 
this base is going to get cancelled, or well, the planetary morph is going to get cancelled, and Kira is desperately trying to hold on to that fifth base, as his income is already very mediocre. Now we see a couple of links heading into the third, at the same time Scarlet moving into the natural. Still a big bank here for Scarlet, she's up 40 supply as well, 50 supply, decently sized bank behind it. Greater Spire is on the way. We see 18 workers go down on the side of Cure, who finishes up his, uh, I believe that's his fourth orbital command center. It's going to allow him to throw down a couple of these mules. Of course, as long as there's no lurkers, it's going to be a mule galore as well. 56, 56 links on the way here for Scarlet. 14 Bane links being morphed in. The first Corruptors are out, and they're kind of functioning as a, uh, a dumb mutalist that can shoot down. And later on, they might just morph into those Brute Lords. Corruptors right now moving forward with this big army. Mine hits are good, but there's not enough mines to deal with all of those Bane links. And I'm not quite sure if there's enough damage output in this army to deal with everything else on the ground. Oh, these mines in the back burrowing. Good hits here for Cure. A lot of the Banes have gone down. This planetary is still alive. And this was a fight that wasn't all that brilliant for Scarlet. Scarlet wants to take out this base. Corruptors are actually going to work while well, the... The Ultras, they know they're gonna die, but they're kind of zoning away this army from this planetary. The Corruptors do their job, and Scarlet returns back home. 83 workers against 46. Six base against four. Um, take a look at the mining base. We have a complete mining base here for Scarlet. This is seven, soon to be four-ish patches. We have three patches left over here and four patches here. Cure has four patches left over there on that one base, and then... Well, these are going to mine out soon as well. So soon only three patches. Kier's going to be working off seven patches. Needs to start mining from this base again. It's absolutely pivotal for Kier here that he gets something going here. Single mine on this top side base. Has been denying this for a while, I believe. You see three kills. Wouldn't surprise me if all those three kills are drones that are just being sent time after time again. Curious to see what Kier is going to do. In my mind, the perfect play here is just to sit back and hope that you can max out and then start doing something. However, Scarlet isn't going to give Cure that time as the Brute Lords now are moving forward. And this is going to render a lot of these mines useless as well. Look at all these mines being detonated on top of Brute Links. Exactly what you want if your name is Scarlet. Uh, or if you're a Zerg player and oh, mine actually is going to hit a Brute Lord. It's an interaction we don't see every single day. The only thing that Cure can do at this point against the Brute Lord push is really just the base trade. And that's exactly what Cure is setting out to do. Scarlet, however, isn't getting too greedy, isn't pushing forward too far um, with just the Brute Lord. Says, no, I want to have a couple of Banelings with that. I want to have a couple of Ultra so they can tank a bit of damage. I still want to be capable of dealing with this run by as well. That's, that seventh base can be cancelled, but I don't want to lose anything else. This orbital command is going to go down, uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. If it lifts, these corruptors will take care of it. If it stays on the ground, the Brute Lords will destroy it. We have a complete base trade move out here coming out of Cure. Two Vikings are on the way. I don't think Cure can muster up a Viking force that will be big enough to ever deal with these Brute Lords. You're going to need six, maybe eight Vikings to be capable of killing these Corruptors. And then working through the Brute Lords will take a very long time as well. This gold is going to get taken out though. Cure actually making a play for it. We'll also take out this top side base. That's a lot of the mining here for Scarlet. She still has this bottom side base. But Cure also managed to take... Well, what is this? The, the 10, 11 o'clock. And if Cure can secure his production, he might actually be in a playable position here. As the income for Scarlet is falling rapidly. There is still a lot of banelings on the map though. And this army might just be getting caught. 35 banes looking for the kill, looking for the chase. Do we have a liftoff? I don't think Cure will want to because he also kind of wants to trade. Problem is he can't really trade. A lot of this army is extremely low. Pickup is inevitable. Here we go. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Yeah, not the cleanest pickup. I think about seven, eight units did end up falling there before they ever entered the medevac. But it is what it is. Corruptors now trying to take out these Vikings with the transfuses there as well. These Viking numbers just aren't big enough. No production whatsoever right now for Cure, while Scarlet, although she has a very low income, still is capable of producing at least something. We have a massive drop moving towards, well, where is this drop moving towards? Back to the top side, it seems. As Scarlet is taking out every last uh, single production structure, Vikings continue kiting, but the Corruptor numbers are growing as an extra Corruptor gets added onto the field. So two more Corruptors get added. We'll see if uh, 
these three Vikings are going to be capable of doing it. They're kiting their little hearts out. Marines in the back will give some type of assistance, but only a single Viking remains. Starport is dead. There's only one production structure here for Cure. And I think, my good friend Cure, it's time right now to bite the bullet. It is over. You have lost 1,900 minerals in the bank, and none of them can be spent. Banelings are having a party. Scarlet takes out the GSL Season 3 champion actually wins big up to scarlet nice game uh, cool moves with the muralisk a very solid early game as well Cree spread looking uh, feisty as always and a well, what is this a semi macro hatch here in the end out of scarlet towards cure uh, fun game to watch i hope you guys enjoyed it as well if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see all of you next time for a new video thanks so much for watching and bye bye